Uh, my name is Meshat Kodiko, a teacher of biology. Uh, welcome to our today's lesson, which is uh, going to talk about the mammalian ear. Uh, just like uh, we know the, the are vital organs of the body, the, mammalian, the ear is one of them. So we want to look at how this structure, or rather the organ, uh, the ear, uh, carries out its functions. First of all, uh, we have to look at um, the functions of the ear. There are two major functions of the ear. One, the ear is used to perceive sound, or what we can say simply, hearing. Number two, the ear, the ear is used for body balance. So uh, virtually we have two things, that is the hearing, uh, one of the functions of the ear, and uh, balance, that is uh, the two major functions of the ear. Let us uh, look at the structure of the ear. The ear has got uh, three major parts. We have the outer ear, we have the middle ear, and the inner ear. So the process of hearing starts from the outer ear. If uh, we look at this, we can see what we are calling the pinna. The pinna is the uh, external part of the ear, which is situated out. It is made up of cartilages. And if you look at it properly, uh, you can see the shape of the, the pinna. The pinna is made in such a way that it forms a funnel shape. So from the pinna, the sound is collected. The sound that is collected is then directed into a tube. We can have a look at this. There is the outer funnel here, which is the pinna, and then we have the, uh, the tube. The tube here is called external auditory canal. The external auditory canal uh, is made up of uh, cells, and these cells uh, produce wax. What uh, is the function of the wax that is uh, produced by the cells of the external auditory canal? The wax here traps dust particles and other foreign materials from entering the delicate inner parts of the ear. So when the sound is collected by the pinna, it is then directed to the external auditory canal. Uh, from the external auditory canal, uh, this external auditory canal then uh, takes the sound waves into another part of the ear that is called tympanic membrane. If you don't want to call it tympanic membrane, then it is also uh, known as the eardrum. The eardrum has got a function that is to dash with the sound waves. One, it uh, changes the sound waves into vibrations. So the sound waves having been changed into vibrations are then going to be directed to the ear ossicles. The ear ossicles are made up of three uh, small bones. Uh, these small bones are in order of their appearance, uh, the way they occur. There is the millers, we have the incas, and we have the steps. Together they form what we call the ear ossicles. So, once the sound waves have been changed into vibrations, as they are vibrating, uh, they are taken to the ear ossicles. So the vibrations, first of all, hit the millers, after which they are then transmitted to the incas, then we have the steps. So sound waves having been uh, changed into vibrations are then uh, directed to the semicircular canals. Semicircular canals, you can see the semicircular canals, which again is connected to the uh, round window. Not round window, but the oval window first. So, this, uh, the ear ossicles here, having received the sound waves in form of vibrations, they then um, amplify the sounds. That means that the sound ampli uh, amplification of the sound is done by the ear ossicles. So, the uh, sound that has been amplified is directed to the oval window. The oval window uh, transmits the sound waves which are now amplified to the uh, round window. Then you can see that part from the oval window, we have this part here, the so-called 
uh, the, uh, the round window. The round window then transmits uh, the sound waves into a tube-like, uh, a folded tube-like structure. This tube-like structure is given the name Cochle, or rather you can call it Cochle. So, uh, within this uh, Cochle, it is made up of three layers. Each layer has got a tube with a cavity, and the cavity is filled with a special type of fluid that is called uh, the endolymph. The endolymph here uh, vibrates uh, because uh, the sound waves were coming in form of vibrations, it also vibrates. But apart from that, we also see that uh, there is this tube here that is coming uh, found at the middle here. That tube is called the eustachian tube. The eustachian tube has got a major function because sometimes you find that uh, in areas where we move, there must be, may be a difference in uh, pressure. So to, uh, to uh, balance the pressure of the middle ear and the uh, outer ear, the eustachian tube works handy in balancing the pressure between the middle ear and the uh, outer ear. From there, uh, when the sound waves come from the endolymph, they are then directed to the nerves. The nerves here are what we are calling auditory nerves. The auditory nerves are in connection with the cochlea, so they, they move all the way to the brain cells. So the auditory nerves uh, transmit the information uh, from the cochlea in form of vibrations to the brain for interpretation so that sound is perceived. And in that case, it is going to perceive the pitch of the sound. That means that whether the tone is high or low, that is going to be interpreted by the auditory uh, nerves in the brain, which then uh, perceives the sound uh, in terms of the distance and uh, maybe the pitch of the what of the sound. So we have now seen uh, the way uh, uh, the ear works. So maybe just to repeat what I've just said, I've said that the, sound, uh, the ear is made up of the external area that is called the pinna. The pinna is funnel shaped. A uh, being funnel shape enables it to collect the sound and direct them into the uh, external auditory canal, which I've also said is the line with the wax. Uh, this, well, the cells producing wax. These cells are important because they produce wax that trap dust particles and other foreign materials. From there, the sound waves are transmitted to the tympanic membrane, or what we are calling the uh, eardrum, which then changes the sound waves into vibrations, after which they are transmitted to the ear ossicles, starting with the first one, a uh, first uh, small bone that is called the milas, then they are taken to the incas, then the steps. The three uh, the uh, bones here, the millers, the incas, and the steps all together uh, change or amplify the sound. The sound is then taken to the semicircular canals, which is connected to the oval window. So they are then transmitted to the oval window, after which uh, they are taken to the uh, cochlea. The cochlea, which is made up of uh, three uh, tubes that are folded. Uh, these foldings are important because they, have, they form a cavity with a special fluid called the endolymph. The endolymph here is then transmitted uh, via the otot canal into the uh, brain for interpretation. And we have also said that we have the tube here which is coming at the middle of the ear, what we are calling eustachian tube. The eustachian tube works to, uh, in order to balance the pressure between the middle ear and the external ear. The eustachian tube, uh, which balances the pressure between the middle ear and the uh, outer ear. So that, all, that is all about our structure of the mammalian ear, and I want to thank you very much for listening to my lesson.